Hi everyone and welcome to this my video on transition matrices using the rule S of n plus 1 equals T S of n plus b. Whew, that's a long title again. Uh, my name's Darren from Maths Guru. Thank you very much for finding my channel and hopefully for finding this video useful. If you want to head over to mathsguru.com and sign up, it's absolutely free to sign up. You get downloadable lesson notes, VCAR exam questions and so much more They're here to try and help. Now, what am I going to talk about? Well, learning objectives. If you want to know my learning objectives, pause the video and read them there. Not very many for this particular video, but basically just telling you what we are going to deal with. But very much builds on the previous lesson. I've just finished recording a 44 minute video. It is probably one of the most important videos of the whole section because it shows you where a lot of the tips and tricks are and how to interpret transition matrices. It is huge and worth spending time having a look over. But Building on, I basically have been pretending that I am going to open a car hire company. I don't want to teach anymore. Why would I want to teach anymore? No one subscribes to my YouTube channel. This is completely pointless, he says, joking. But in a more serious point, if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, at the end of the day, when three people sign up, I get a little bit of a happy dance. I won't do it now because it's embarrassing. Um, but that little click from you uh, probably doesn't mean very much. But to me, it is massive. Nobody watches mass videos. Everyone out there says I should be doing stand-up comedy. Uh, probably not. No, I'm not doing any, any videos because I get fired. Um, but the point of it is I do this because I love it. And by sending, uh, by subscribing, if you click that button, um, it just says, yeah, keep going, dude. I've watched your video. And that's that's all I can ask. Right, recap. So I got my tar, car hire. I basically set up uh, two places, one in Bendigo and one in Colac. And we now can understand how to read transition diagrams. We know or should know by now how to read a transition matrix. And also that our columns are start and our rows are end. And these things here must add one. And that's sort of the basics. But being able to read leading diagonals and what it means, etc., etc., is so, so really important. But the problem is, I've now realized in previous video, I think we got to the point where we got some sort of steady mate, steady state matrix. Uh, where we ended up with, what was it, 30 and 60, I think it was, it was 30 and 60, if I remember off the top of my head, cars would end up in Bendigo and Colac. So my steady state solution suggested that 30 cars would end up in Bendigo, 60 cars would end up in Colac, that's fine. But wow, my prices are so cheap, the business is booming. I am raking it in. We are in the moolah, in the money. And so I've decided I want to expand the business. I'm not going to move it anywhere else. I'm actually just going to start adding cars in. For each week, I'm going to buy new cars and add it into the business. Now, again, if we go back to the work we did previously when we had financial maths, we had V0 as our principal. We had V of n plus 1 is equal to some R value times V of n. And then we had this plus or minus B value. Yes? Did we have it called B? I can't remember. Um, now, this here is basically when we were adding investments in, adding money into our investment each week on week on week. Well, same idea here in terms of cars. We're now going to start adding on or subtracting. I, I may well, you know, uh, take cars away. I may, I don't know, sell them on the second-hand market because I want to drive my business into the ground. I don't know. Bad analogy. So the rule, uh, let's just recap what we did previously. We realized that we can now not have to do all of our calculations step by step by step. We can work out any particular element, any state of my uh, matrix or my real world situation by doing T of M times S0. And S0 is my initial state matrix, how much we opened it by, yeah? So if I wanted week 10, I'd make that little N a 10, which means I'd make that little N there a 10 times by my S0, job done. Now, this here is a situation that I was just talking about. Let's say matrix B means that I'm now going to add two cars each week. Two to Bendigo and two to Colac. How would I model this? Well, eh, a lot of people think we can actually just do this here. But sadly, that's not going to work. All right, In any way, shape, that is not going to work. Why? Because that formula really should be S of N plus 1 is equal to my transition matrix times S of N plus B, right? And a lot of people get tripped up here. They think I can just take this formula here, add a plus B on the end, and you can, uh, and that you're going to get the right answer, but you can't because this is a week-to-week -week increase. Here, that would suggest you are going to only add two cars at the end of the whole cycle. So if I did T of 10 here, 
then I'd basically work out how many cars there were and then add two at the end of week 10. That's not what the problem says. The problem says that we actually need to add two cars at the end of each week. So be very careful that when you do it, you're using the right iterative formula. Let's, try and, uh, uh, let's jump into some examples. A rental car starts with 90 cars, 50 in Bendigo and 40 in Le Colac. Cars are usually rented. So we've seen this example before. I'm not going to read over it all. But what they're now saying is we're changing our recurrence relationship. So here is my new recurrence relationship. S0 is 50, 40. We are now going to have to get to my next week. I'm going to take my transition matrix, multiply it by my current week, and add on this value of B, which in context now is we're adding two cars to each of Bendigo and Colac. Determine the number of cars at Bendigo and Colac after. Right, I can only do this on my calculator, so let's put all of my information in as we would normally do. So let's put in that. I'm gonna put in my S0 first, 50 and 40. Hit there, control store and S0. We want a two by two matrix, please. For my transition matrix, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Oh, he says 0 0.2 and 0 0.9. And we're going to put that into T. Right, now again, I've got to do it week to week to week. Now, there's no shortcut. I can't do T to the power. Right, so after one week. So what, is, what have I got to do for one week? So S of 1 is going to be T times S of 0 plus my value of B. Up, oh, let's put my value of B in as well, because that's going to make life a bit easier. So two, tab two, and let's do control and store that please in B. Right, there we go. So now I can use my calculator because I've got all those in. So I'm going to do T times S0 plus B. Hit enter, and there we go. Outcomes, the end of week one, we're going to have 46 cars and 48 cars. ka -ching. After two weeks, well, this is now where I start using my ANS button or copying and pasting, right? So we got week one. So S2 is now going to be T times S1 plus B. All right, well, we can do that. Thank you very much because I've got my T. So I'm going to, on my calculator, I'm going to do T times S1. I know what that is. I'm just going to go up and copy it down. And then I can do plus B again on my thing. And there we go. And again, because my calculator is now going to start giving me decimal values, I have to interpret them to be 44 and 54. Now, the question is, how do I know what these add up to? Yeah, well, initially, how many cars did we start with? We started with 90 cars. At the end of the first week, we added four cars in. So we're going to collect. So these two values here must add up to 94, and they do. The next two must add up to 98, and they do. So that's just a running check to make sure you understand how many they should add up to. Otherwise, you might make a mistake in a sack. But there we go. Nice, simple question to start with. Oh, no. We can do things backwards. And again, these are one of the more tricky questions in VCAR exams where they now ask you to do it backwards.